Good morning, everyone. Um, for those of you who don't know me, um, my name is Ahmad, and I am the program and membership manager at the Greater Wilkes Bay Chamber of Commerce. I would like to thank, welcome you all to our Wednesday Wisdom for this week. Um, so before I get started, I want to go into some housekeeping rules. The attendees will be muted during the, the sharing of the first um, three businesses, and then please use the chat box to indicate um, when you're willing to share, and Michaela and myself would then unmute you to avoid any um, talking over each other or also any of the uh, of the live stream to be featured with um, little noises in the background. We will, um, we encourage you also to put your contact information in the chat so anyone can reach out to you for a reference or um, just to chat after the event is over. The chat is downloadable and you can do so by clicking the three little box on the bottom right hand corner and download the chat. Um, if you have any technical difficulties or issues, please reach out to Michaela either in the chat or email at Michaela.Benzikowski at Wilk-Barry.org and she'll be able to help you out. And the event is also being live streamed and a recording will be available um, at a later date during this week. So today's Wednesday Wisdom is inter an, inter an interactive small business roundtable discussion. The purpose of this discussion is to share innovative strategies, and practices that you as a business that it has implemented to help your business and the community um, during this unprecedented time. Um, this is an, uh, during this event, you're encouraged to share your ideas and experiences on how your business has adapted um, to the COVID-19 crisis to promote a healthy dialogue um, throughout. Leading us today in this discussion is Liz Graham, Chief Operating Officer at Riggs Asset Management Company, located in downtown Wilkesbury. Um, Liz has served as the chair uh, of the board of the Greater Commerce, the Diamond City Partnership, the New Angola Lake Association, and currently she's the board chair of the Greater Wilkesbury Business and Industry. Um, and now I'll, I'll turn it over to Liz. Thanks so much, Maud. Um, I'm thrilled that we're able to do this and uh, figure out a way to connect all these business owners um, virtually. So obviously it's a challenging time. Um, everybody's concerned about their loved one's health and well-being, um, but we're also pretty concerned about how um, we make sure that small business uh, survives and then thrives coming out of this pandemic. Um, and we're fortunate today to have three fantastic small businesses joining us. Um, I have utilized all three of them, I am happy to say. So I'm really um, thrilled to hear um, the innovative things that they've done to um, continue to do business um, during this challenging time. So with us today, we've got, we have uh, Tyler Rice from Axelrad um, print, Screen Printing and Embroidery. Um, he's done an amazing thing that he's going to talk about um, to help uh, our local small businesses. It's, it's really a, a fantastic story. And then we have uh, Donna Caruso from 11th Element, who um, um, prior to the pandemic, I was fortunate enough to use their services a few times, and uh, it's a fantastic place. And I'll be really curious to hear how Donna is uh, navigating through this, and she has an experience-oriented business. Um, and then finally, um, but not uh, least, we have Maggie Kalpin of Nibbles and Bits, who has the most delicious chocolate, artisan chocolate and goodies. And if you haven't had them, I'll tell you, they just bring a smile to your face the minute you have them. So you should go uh, check them out. So with that, let's get started. Um, I'm gonna kick it off to Tyler, but I'm gonna ask the same question to all three of our panelists. Tyler, what is your company doing to provide services um, to your customers during this period? And how did, the, how did you get the idea? Uh, so I put together a program that I'm calling uh, the Shirt Off Our Backs Movement. Um, essentially, it's an online-based uh, community uh, web store where people can showcase their t-shirt for their small business um, and have the community go and just purchase it directly. Um, all the proceeds will go to the small business um, of their choice. So if a customer goes on and they see a business that they'd like to support, they just buy the shirt and uh, $10 from that purchase goes to, um, to that small business. Um, it originally kind of came to mind um, when everything kind of got shut down and I was just trying to think of 
how I can use my skills and my shop to bring good to the area. Um, I was going to do a kind of a generic, just regular COVID um, design that I can just sell one shirt, uh, see how much money I could raise. Uh, I kind of became cloudy as to how I would donate the money, where it would go to. Um, so I started to come up with the idea of having it be more based around each individual um, business. And then I kind of like the idea of it showcasing small business in general. So if you're on the site for one business that brought you there, you're now going to see 200 others that you may not have known. And I'm hoping that that brings a little bit of light forward when things get lifted, people will try new restaurants, go to a new gym, uh, kind of like support local business now that they know that these people are in your area and they also need the help. I have to say, um, I, I bought a few t-shirts off of um, your website and uh, I was so shocked when I went on there, there were at that time, and this was a couple of weeks ago, 267 small businesses that yes. you were, um, and I'm sure the list is larger today, um, and um, what you're doing is fantastic. And I did exactly that. I went for um, one small business who had posted on their Facebook um, site that I wanted to support that was shut down. And while I was there and I saw you had so many, I just searched and found a, a couple of other right. um, friends of mine that own businesses that were on there. So um, how many t-shirts do you think that you have um, put, put out there now? Um, so right now we are at $66,500 raised. So that's wow. 6,600 shirts. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That's unbelievable. It's pretty nuts lately. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you have to do all the graphic design and everything to put that together, right? With their yeah. logos and things like yeah. that. So I've been donating my time and my art services as well. Um, just because. I don't feel like I should be charging anyone to have their logo recreated uh, for a program that's trying to donate money. Um, so I've been trying to do that off the clock and in my own time. So I have been working a little later, which is why I get back to people kind of late sometimes. Um, but yeah, so just kind of well, a bonus of free artwork right now. Well, thank you so much, Tyler. That has been an unbelievable and, and frankly surprising because who would think, right. you know, um, a t-shirt could make a difference in the life of a small business, but it really does. And I ended up uh, for myself, I plan on um, doing yoga, you know, I'm starting to do yoga. And so my, my new yoga wardrobe is a new small business every uh, t-shirt every day. So thank you so much for that. So our next um, panelist is Donna Caruso from 11th Element. Donna, um, what hit, your business is an experience business. You're in the, you know, the health and wellness spa business. How are you surviving during this? Well, thank you for having me. Uh, first of all, and Tyler, thank you. We are one of the small businesses that are benefiting from your generosity. So we can't thank you enough. You have all of our future business and we're, we're directing people your way. So thank you for being so kind. Um, so yes, we are uh, a service-based business. If anybody isn't uh, fully aware of what we do, we, we have basically uh, the salt rooms, uh, float tanks, and uh, infrared saunas. We also do massage uh, on select dates. So we're, we're all service-based. And uh, we shut down March 16th, which was uh, a little bit of a struggle. So we had to pivot quite quickly and to just not only to maintain the customers that we have, but also to keep potential new customers engaged. So part of our strategy was in the beginning, uh, we took most of all of our retail online. I created a quick online store and then posted that on our website just for our retail products. Um, and then um, my husband, Chris, decided to get crafty all of a sudden. Who knew he had this in him, but he started making these portable backlit salt walls that people could take home with them. Of course, it doesn't have the benefits that the salt room has with the halo generator, but they're really nice decor pieces, excuse me. And, uh, and they, it took off. So that was, that was a nice little surprise. And uh, so he's continues to make those and, um, and we're getting good response. So that was kind of another pivot. Uh, and then we started creating videos because we kept getting a lot of questions on how, 
one, why did you move back home? Two, how did you get into the spa business and what's going on? So we thought, okay, here's the, here's the time to really tell our story. And, uh, you know, in the past, I co-created created a, a video for us to help tell their story a little bit. Discover Nipa just put out another, a story on us uh, about our why coming back to Nipa. So we appreciate everybody uh, supporting us and getting our, our information out. But now what we're doing is creating information videos. What is a salt room? What does it do for you? How can it benefit you? What's a flow tank? Everybody's a little bit curious about it. They've heard of it. They don't know what it is. They're claustrophobic. I'm like, you don't have to worry about any of that. It's, it's cool. We're, we're, you'll be great. And so we're having fun with these and we're putting it all out and telling Chris's story on how he was injured and how, you know, stem cells and then did all this treatment. So it's, it's really interesting and, and uh, we're getting a good response from that. Then we also started a variety of other Zoom conversations with other local businesses in the area that, that we know that we're friends with to figure out what are your struggles as a business and how can we help you? So it's just kind of helping getting them exposure and trying to help them as much as, as we can. And it's still keeping us kind of in the forefront in the face of all of our customers as well. Uh, then we ramped up, you know, all of our social media and the channels that in the platforms that we post on, we expanded that. Our email communications with all of our customers uh, increased a little bit, but I didn't want to be too spammy, but just, just to kind of say, hey, this is, we're here for you. This is what we have going on uh, and hope you're well. Uh, we did a virtual sound bath meditation. If anybody tuned into that, that was a uh, really great. Jamie did such a good job and it's just kind of a, an example of what you can expect when we do them in person when you could come there and it's it's really unique really unique experience um and then you know the last thing we're doing is we're just creating a new growth plan you know for when we can reopen we understand that as a small business being closed we're not the only ones that are having you know difficulties everybody's difficult having difficulties during this time whether it's emotional financial just situation being surrounded by all family and friends so we want to be able to have them back into the spa but also make it affordable for them so we we are restructuring our whole our whole pricing uh list and uh so we hope that that'll at least that's our way to kind of help back because we were trying to figure out how can we help too and this is the people that come in that really need this our, these services for conditions that they have but they need they need help too so we need business, they need, they need the service and the help. So that's how we're gonna approach it. We're gonna just really give them a, a new revised price schedule and, uh, and then that way hopefully everybody can kind of get back to, to normal. So that, that's, that's it. Oh, I think, did you want me to ask? I wanted, I, I'm going off a couple of lists. Am I supposed to keep going off other, other lists? Uh, shout out to other businesses, is that what I'm, should I be doing that or? I don't know. Well, we'll um, get back to that question Got it. Uh, okay. towards the end. Um, okay. I'll turn it back over to Liz. Thank you so much for sharing, Thank Donna. You. Thank, awesome. you. Thank you. Liz, you're still muted. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> I had myself muted because around around this time of day, I started to get a, a, a gazillion emails and uh, and they all ding. <laughs> so, but thanks so much, Donna. I can't wait to get back to 11th Element and use that salt room and flotation room. So thanks so much. Um, Maggie Kalpin of Nibbles and Bits has um, a fantastic business as well in Dunmore. And um, Maggie, I, I hate that we can't go into your business because it is absolutely like the most beautiful space imaginable. But I love what you're doing with delivering curbside pickup. Pick tell, tell us more about what you're doing to do business during this period. Sure. So for those who don't know what we are, we're Nibbles and Bits. We're a gourmet gift basket and chocolate shop. We've been around for 35 years. Um, I've had my fair share of problems. I've had a fire in my building. I had to pitch a tent outside. So coronavirus to me, I've, I've, I, I knew how to take it on. I'm pretty resilient when it comes to life throwing crap at you. Um, so I, as I always did with anything else, when the governor came on and it was mandated for non-essential businesses to shut down, um, at that point, I did take three days to kind of process what was going on, handle it, you know, include my employees. We have four full-time employees and four part-time employees. So we included them into this journey of what we're going to do. 
So for those three days, we processed it. We still took online orders and phone orders, but we technically, our storefront wasn't open. But then after that, I got angry, right? The rest of us, we have a lot of emotions. We got hurt. We were sad. We we're like, what are we going to do? And then you get angry and then you get happy. There's a lot of different feelings going on. So at that point, I got, I got angry. And when I get angry, I'm, I get tough. I toughen up. So that's when I contacted our local chamber of, um, in Lackawanna County in Scranton. And I said, how do I apply for that waiver? I have my manufacturing license because we do make our own chocolate. And sorry if the phone rings. Sorry, guys. Um, so how do, I, how do I apply for that? I applied for a waiver, and I was granted a waiver. So we reopened on March 25th. We were allowed to open our storefront. I chose not to for the safety of my staff and the safety of my customers. And because of that, we chose to do curbside pickup six days a week and delivery, which we always have done. So curbside pickup was something new for us. Um, it definitely is getting my, my steps in. That's pretty cool. So I don't mind that for my little Fitbit. Um, but it's nice to know that we didn't give up during this and that we keep on going and customers are super excited that we're still part of their journeys, especially Easter and Mother's Day, and you can still rely on us. And the other kickback or the neat thing that we did was we really pushed, like many of the other businesses just mentioned, social media, your website, you know, we relaunched our website in January. How about that for timing, right? And um, thank God for that because the traffic on the website has been amazing. So I can't thank our community and our, and our local, you know, customers and non-local customers from out of state ordering from us. And another big thing that we do is we sell to Wegmans. So we actually sell 17 of my chocolates to six different Wegmans all over Northeast PA. Um, that definitely helped me get my waiver as well because we do, I'm not, I'm not technically essential, but in my mind, my, I, I think the rest of us, we like to think we are essential. Um, because we sell to a grocery store, we got the waiver as well. So because of the Wegmans accounts, we have been restocking them two to three times a week. We've been going to State College, Lehigh Valley, um, with our little niblet van. It's really cute if you haven't seen it. Um, so because of that, it's getting our name out. I keep getting messages from people saying, thank you for, you know, not closing your doors. Like, what would we do for Easter for our kids? So that's really nice to know that we're part of their family story, um, that what we all are doing every day is affecting others. Whether it's a positive or a negative effect, it is affecting them. Um, and, I, and I like to say I'm really proud of my staff for being on board as well. I reached out to every one of them and I said, we're gonna reopen. If you don't feel comfortable, I understand, but I hope you, you know, you're part of this. And every one of them jumped back in, which really said a lot to me as well. Many of them have been with me for years. So for us, what we did was the curbside pickup, like Liz said, the delivery. We just went to Nicholson and Tunkhannock yesterday. We go as far as you know, Dallas, Sugarloaf, Mountaintop. I mean, you name it, we probably pretty much will do it for you. We offer same day delivery. And we've always done those things, but now more than ever are we doing those things. And we're really letting people know through social media. So those two out, um, places for us, you know, online and then Wegmans has really been truly an amazing thing for us to have during this scary time. So yeah, that was my ramble. <laughs> <laughs> what, a, what a crazy um, roller coaster it's been, right? Um, it has. Yeah, so, so you mentioned that you- yeah oh my god oh my goodness and i feel like don't get me wrong i cried there's been many times yeah. i cried uh, one night at easter I, I actually uh we were here till about three in the morning to complete the orders the other girl cried to me we cried together um she slept over that night you know we we, wore, we washed our clothes we wore the same outfit the next day kind of a thing and we just did it because i don't i, I don't give up you know and i want my customers to know we're here for them we're, we're like as everyone's saying we're in this together you know, we're all going through it. We're all going through Groundhog Day, as Liz said to me yesterday, because I thought the meeting was yesterday. I have no idea what's going on sometimes. Um, <laughs> but it's neat that, you know, we're not alone. So these are normal feelings to feel. These are normal moments to have. And we have our friends and fellow business owners and even our families, you know, to really get us through these dark times. Absolutely. Well, it's really hard when, you know, you have a life's purpose and, you know, through no fault of your own, you have to shut down. Right. And I think that that's the thing that so many of us have been struggling with that, um, you know, it's okay to shut down for a couple of weeks, but as the weeks turn into months, it, you know, it becomes very defeating. And so, um, so having that positive attitude, figuring out a way to make it work and to do business. It's just, you know, it, it's what's so inspiring during this entire process. Um, so, 
I'm going to shoot it back to Tyler for a minute, um, if you don't mind. So Tyler, I'm going to have you unmute. Um, Tyler, um, you're a, a marketing guy, essentially, um, on the um, design side. So um, how are you marketing um, your business and your message um, to other people? And, and what um, advice would you give to other businesses? Um, currently, I mean, as same with everybody, social media is just the absolute best way to get any kind of message out there. Um, so, uh, myself and a colleague, uh, shout out to Kate Kishbach cause she's been crushing it. Um, she's the one who's been handling our Facebook and Instagram through all of this. Um, so I've been helping design the ads and she'll just post and, you know, add a, you know, thoughtful message to kind of give people hope, uh, during all this. Um, but yeah, like social media is definitely the way to go, um, in my mind, um, We've had, let's see, two radio stations actually donate and give us a little bit of airtime to um, spread the message. I've been on a couple of the uh, news outlets as well, a couple of newspapers. So right now, pretty much any way that I can get the message out there, I've used and exploited. Um, and then I'm also, along with doing the artwork for your company, I'm also supplying um, ads for each individual business. So they're getting a specific ad catered to just their shirt that they can post on their social medias. Because if I can create this army of social media sharers, then my message is gonna expand past people who just follow Axrad and now into the 257, 287 uh, businesses, um, the word is just gonna get out there. And uh, I think it's proven that it's, it definitely has. I know you're working uh, really long hours um, in order to get the t-shirts out for the small businesses that you're helping. Are you seeing um, other type of business come in to Axelrad as a result of the um, you know, good work that you're doing to help everybody else? Um, not necessarily yet, just because I know a lot of people aren't exactly open, so they're not even looking for that business to come through just yet. Um, we do offer like, small stuff like banners um a lot of people have been using us now at restaurants to just kind of let them know like hey we're open or this is curbside pickup um but as far as like t-shirts and stuff like that i've gotten tons of emails saying i can't wait till this lifts so i can use you but yeah. um as far as that traffic coming in just yet it has not but um it's totally understandable considering that you know unfortunately most of us are out of work yeah, I, I have a feeling though you're you will see it. Um, I and I think just as Donna said, um, you know, uh, everybody's going to remember who you know who put themselves out there to help everybody else. Um, so, so great work, um, Donna. I'm going to switch it over to you if you can unmute for a minute. Um, and you talked about this a little bit. Um, but what were, um, I know you talked about some of your videos, how are you getting your marketing message to your clients and potential clients? Sure. So now we are switching more to doing a lot of videos. I do a lot of just gra graphics or text posts before, but now we're kind of diving into a little bit more because a lot of those posts were hey, here, come on in for this special, or this is what we have going on. So now we've kind of had a pivot to, instead of an offer, we're transitioning really into education and explaining what they can expect when they come in. And those have really had a, had a nice response because like I said, everybody probably has heard of a float tank or they're hearing about salt rooms now or what's the difference between an infrared sauna and uh, this regular steam sauna that my gym has and so it's nice to be able to put out that information so people can learn and and that's what we want to do we, we want to give you as much information as we can so you can make the educated decision of yes this could really help me or yes i can really learn to just relax and go away for you know for an hour and that's what we want we want you to have a really good experience when you come in so the more educated and knowledgeable you are before you get to us i think it's it's best because we also get 
the question all the time, well, which one should I do? And that's really, it's different for everybody, right? Depends on why are you coming to us and uh, we want to be able to treat you right. So that's really what we're doing now. It's more of a, the educational path that we're doing right now. The video, um, it's funny because in our business, um, we, uh, we do video as well. And typically we use, um, Cole creative to, you know, to do a professional video for us, but in this time we couldn't. So, um, we wanted to get a message message out to our clients and we ended up doing, um, an iPhone video. Is that what you're doing? How are, you know, what is the technical way that you're doing a video? There's nothing technical about it. We're using, <laughs> we're using a phone and uh, I could create a blooper reel if I had to. It, it's, uh, you know, Chris is on one side and I'm on the other and it's, uh, yeah, it, that's all we're doing. We're using our phones and it's working for right now. But yes, when you want something polished, you need to go definitely to someone like Cole Creative mm -hmm. for that. But for, for right now, we're just, we're putting out regular content and folks are accepting that. And I think it is just because it's the, the, the time that we're in and uh, keeping everybody safe. And do you think that the video has helped you gain more traction as far as um, people knowing about your business? For sure, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, I wish it was a longer answer, but no. It's, yeah. It definitely That's is. Great. Yeah, I, and it's been a good learning experience for us because in the beginning, I didn't want our faces in our ad stuff for Chris and I. I just, no, I want the business to kind of stand on its own. Uh, and we were kind of forced to change that. We were, we were forced to change a lot of things. Like Maggie was saying, like, you have mm -hmm. to kind of get scrappy now. And you got to figure out how can yeah. we continue? And so we did. And it, people just respond they, like they respond to when you put a puppy or a kitten online. Everybody loves it, right? So now everybody loves these videos <laughs> of real stories of real people. And you know that when you walk in, you're going to see one or both of us there. And, and that's what's, what's working for us now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. Um, I'm going to shoot it over to Maggie real quick and sort of ask the same question. Um, so Maggie, um, I know you talked a little bit about launching the new website and everything. What are the, some of the marketing things that you're doing to um, get the word out about your business? Hold on one second. Come on, there we go. Okay, there you go. am I good? All right. Yeah, you're good. <laughs> it's like go. It's like getting a little wonky. I'm like, of course, this is happening. <laughs> um, I almost want to say what they said. Um, but yeah, basically the social media thing and like Donna said, you know, hearing your story, I've done that kind of um, marketing before where I've shared personal tidbits, you know, of how I got into my business at 24, um, things that were personal, like my sister passing away from cancer, things that, that you know, might maybe a customer or somebody that's looking at the stories can relate to. Um, and if anyone that really knows me knows I'm a very kind of emotional, dramatic person and I'm very open about that. You know, like I said, I got mad, you know, during the closure, I understood why I felt all the different feelings. And, um, that's something that I almost kind of share with our customers. Like I let them know if I'm having an uh, we might have, uh, lost a little signal from um am i a little frozen sorry oh, no, there you go you're back okay you're back did you hear any of my spiel i don't even know no um, no okay i'm sorry uh i was saying i allow our customers and our friends and family to know you know everything that we're kind of going through i think like donna said they do like that personal you know feel of knowing who they are who is this person that you're shopping with um that point and it was tough because I didn't even close the day of my sister's viewing when she passed away from cancer so for me to shut down for something that you have no control over I think that was mentioned before it's a mm -hmm. it's a tough feeling you know and um, thank God with social media like they said before Tyler and Donna said you know sharing that sharing fun posts happy posts we're all looking for a little glimmer of happiness right now especially this weather too mm -hmm. so anything that we could put out there that's colorful and exciting and bright and then hearing others that get so passionate about what they do with, with their business and they love what they do and i do i mean i love my business as much as i did the very first day that i bought it 
and it gives me happiness. And like Liz said, it's a pretty place. Yeah. I have pink striped curtains. I have seafoam <laughs> green walls. It is happy and oozing with just rainbows and butterflies. Um, mm. And those rainbows and butterflies have definitely got me through some of my darkest times. And now this is going to be one of them, like one notch off the belt with this, you know, Corona stuff. Um, but I definitely think social media, our website, and I think that's helping a lot of the businesses out there. And even if they don't have a website, you know, you could, I, I've seen a lot of people direct message me for ordering this online. Like they're doing anything they can. And it's really neat to see that the community is really backing up us. You know, like Tyler said, like they are reaching out. I mean, they are reaching out to all of us to see. how are you so it's it's really nice to see and like I've said in, in the past when we had a hardship with our fire years ago I was blown away with our community I mean they rallied behind us and the more that I tried harder to get open the more they rallied they're like wow this girl didn't give up you know life threw some like I said crap at you and he didn't give up and we like those stories I don't know about you I absolutely and you're like, yeah, because it relates to all of us somehow, whether it's with our profession or education or some, you know, speck of our life that we had a hardship. It's nice to know, like we got through it and there's right. others now in it with us. So it's actually really neat to know we're not alone. Others are feeling the same feelings you're feeling and we're going to get through this together. So yeah. yeah, social media, I just went on a ramble, sorry, but yeah, but social I think media I definitely. I think your point is, and I think that a lot of people are making this point, that it's got to be personal um, because we're inundated with messaging um, from email and, you know, everywhere, you know, watching the news. It is depressing. And if you share something that is, uh, you know, meaningful to you and personal, um, it resonates with people. And, um, and I think that... Um, business local business small business is personal um you know your clients and your customers are not a number um you know they're real actual people and you invest in them and their families and um and so i think that uh that's the beauty of small business and why it's so important that we support each other um you know uh, you shared a, a great story about um um, giving back, obviously, a lot of what um, Tyler is doing is giving back. Donna is giving back on the health and wellness side. Um, um, Maggie, you and I are both friends with uh, Danielle Fleming at Notology, formerly Note Fragrance in Scranton. And, um, you know, one of the great stories um, that came out of this that I think is from her, where, um, you know, she figured out um, a WHO World Health Organization approved um, hand rub. And instead of manufacturing perfume, began manufacturing the hand rub and, um, and, and donated much of it to first responders so that if they couldn't get a product to keep them safe that they were getting it through this local business um, and um, and I know that there are other organizations that are doing similar types of outreach um, to essential workers I don't know if we can unmute her but um, <clears throat> Alicia Stavitsky of Heller Gas um, I think they're doing something um, to help small business um, is Alicia hey, on? Can you guys hear me? Yes. Hi, Hello. Alicia. Hello. Yeah, so we're actually um, we're running a promotion up until this Saturday um, for all healthcare workers, first responders. Basically what it is, it's a free grill fill, um, like a 20 pound tank for your grill. Um, it's a free fill that you can go to one of our offices, bring your tank and just show your badge and get a refill for free. So uh, we wow. started about a week ago and it's been, Pretty, it's been going pretty good, you know, so. We're that's really fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and that's the thing, you know, um, maybe somebody thinks, well, I don't know how my business could help mm -hmm. um, uh, an essential worker, but um, there you go. I mean, you're, you're, you know, you figure it out. Um, mm -hmm. So thank you to Heller Gas for doing oh, that. Thank you. Um, 
and um, is uh, Josh Cato on? I think uh, we wanted to reach out to Josh too. Yeah, Liz, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi. Good to see you. Can you hear me? As can you hear me? As like, hello. How you doing today? For Zoom <laughs> yeah, speak, just so you know. Exactly. <laughs> hey, I, I just want to say kudos. <laughs> Um, first off, I just want to say kudos to all you guys. Like everybody on this call is an inspiration, you know, to me. I, I love seeing everybody's Facebook pages, and you know, this has just been an amazing time to connect with people locally. Um, you know, in our hustle and bustle of our daily lives pre-COVID-19, you know, we, you know, walk by people virtually every day. You know, I mean, virtually, like on the web, and not don't notice them because our our lives are busy, and we get so, you know, with kids and jobs and gyms and, you know, social activities and networking events, you know, it's just been an amazing time to really take a step back, A, get to know your family a little bit better, but also the local <laughs> businesses in the area. Um, yeah. So that kind of ties in exactly to what I wanted to talk about. And the reason why I asked Am Ahmad if I could, you know, say something. Um, I, I recently opened up a second location for, our, for my uh, insurance agencies down here in Forty Fort. And um, in my world, when you open a new, up a new agency, you have zero customers and you really need to find out any way that you can do to, um, you know, A, keep the other the one, the one business going, but the second location, you know, how do we find, you know, new customers? So I um, probably mistakenly, I can admit now, tried to go all over the state, you know, and, um, you know, tried to use, you know, some of the investment money that I, I put into the new office to try to get customers all over the state. And honestly, God, it, it kind of failed. Um, and uh, for me to, you know, I can stand here, you know, sit here today and tell you, COVID kind of helped me, you know, to be honest, you know, everything that's going on, you know, uh, somebody said, you know, never, never take it, never waste an opportunity um, of a crisis, you know, to take a step back and, and see what I was doing wrong. Um, and honestly, what got us to our levels of success over the past seven years since opening up my first agency was, was local, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm a third generation small business owner here in Luzerne County, uh, my father and grandfather before me. And I mean, everything that they built their business on was reputation and local. And I kind of just went away from that, you know, not a, not a forget where you came from moment, but, um, you know, really take a step back and say, you know, how do we reconnect locally and you know we you know we cut off all of our sales efforts across the state and really have just focused with me and my team you know working from home virtually i actually literally have them on a call here that we have every day <laughs> at 9 30. um but uh you know reconnecting locally and going you know kind of tying into what i said you know when i initially came on you know there's so much going on here you know i mean you know from holly's posts you know daily with her videos and everything cole creatives doing to what the three of you are doing tyler i mean what you're doing it's just i mean that should be getting you know national recommend you know recognition like that that is that's everything that that you know this embodiment of the new spirit that is the new normal if you want to call it that if you're a small business owner you know helping each other you know in this time you know it's helping each other um, one of the things that we did in, you know, internally, you know, we kind of shut off the sales process for a couple weeks um, and just said, how do we fundamentally change? I kind of went into a hole for a week. Um, you know, we still have to operate, you know, people are still driving their cars, you know, people are still, you know, we had right. a bad windstorm right, <laughs> right in the middle of all this. And that's kind of, you know, for insurance world, that's craziness, right? So we still have our service that we have to do, but from a sales process, you know, kind of took a step back for a week and just said, how do we impact the local community? And, um, you know, I, I work with a bunch of great agents here with Allstate in the area. Um, I know I've, I've actually talked with Christy over at Christy Bonas at State Farm, you know, similar to what they're doing, you know, is just focusing on how do we help people in this time? I don't mean help them by selling them a policy, you know, that's, that's what we do, not why we do it, you know? Right. So, um, um, you know, over the, the almost decade of my business, we've worked with a lot of nonprofits, um, you know, Amy and Sarah over at Northeast Side Services. That's been a, that's been a, 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 that's been my baby since the beginning. I've been on the board over there for a while, but um, one of the areas that's really been hurt obviously is the, is the food bank here locally. So um, one of the things real quick, and then, and then I'll pass it back over. Um, Cause I could talk for an hour if you, if you let me, but, <laughs> um, um, but um, w with Allstate, you know, Allstate being a huge company, you know, fortune 75 company, you know, they have a lot of money to give back. And um, I don't say that to impress you. I say that to impress upon you. What my goal is, is to take their money and impact the local area. 
um, and we've kind of done that with Northeast Side Services and some other charities over the over the past 10 years. But um, what we did is, you know, went to them with a project and said, how do we, um, across the state of Pennsylvania, get agents locally in their markets to help out the local food banks? I mean, everybody saw the situation that happened out in Pittsburgh. I think it was Monroeville or I, I can't, Squirrel Hill Food Bank, where the car, you know cars were lined up for like four miles, you know, trying to get food. Um, I mean, I know our local food bank here with Gene Brady, it's, you know, they I think typically they service about 35,000 households a year. Um, in the first four weeks of the state of emergency, it was about 35,000 in just those four weeks. Wow. So um, what we did is my, myself with a, with a bunch of other local Allstate agents, we teamed up on a project to just raise money on our, on our social media, send out email blasts to our customers and prospects and everything. And um, I am happy to report yesterday actually was, you know, Giving Tuesday and it was the final day of the campaign. But because of our efforts, Allstate decided to um, tack on an additional 20 grand in, wow. in a donation to the local food bank. So it's, uh, oh it's just gosh. an amazing time. It's, um, you know, so yes, I, you know, it's, I, we still don't have the numbers of how much we raised initially, you know, but you know, I, I'm sure it wasn't, you know, near that number. So it's just an amazing thing that they're, that they're doing. And, you know, ways that, you know, I, I want to encourage, you know, the individuals in our community that have a connection to a large company, like they have money to give, right? You know, right. and I mean, there's, there's industries that are not hurt by this, you know, I mean, my industry alone, I mean, you're seeing a lot of companies give money back to customers because, you know, claims aren't being paid because people aren't driving, you know, right. so there's, there's things to do, you know, find the money for the people that have it, get it to the people that need it. So, um, yeah. kudos to you guys all. Thank you so much for letting me chat on this. And, uh, I really sincerely hope to see you in person soon. Oh, that's fantastic. And I have to tell you, thank you for sharing that great news, um, about all states generosity that, um, just gave me goosebumps. Um, and, uh, and Josh, I can totally relate, um, as a small business owner myself to how this pandemic causes you to really um, laser focus. And you realize like there's a lot of stuff that fill up your day, you know, before the pandemic that really didn't matter. Um, and, um, and now I sort of feel like, and I, I think others that I talk to feel this way too, like now you, you've had this opportunity, um, to say, okay, this is what matters. And this is where I'm really going to focus my time. Um, and, and the community is where it's at. So, um, thank you so much for that. Um, <laughs> Now, I know Anthony Melf, who is one of my favorite people on earth, is on the phone somewhere. Um, and uh, Anthony, I don't know if we can unmute you. Um, sure. Good morning, Liz. That is hi. so kind. How are you? <laughs> good, good. You're sporting the pandemic beard, which uh, I like am. half of the men in my life are sporting a pandemic beard. <laughs> <laughs> if, if there's ever been a time to go for it, it's now. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Anthony, I, I wanted to ask you, um, this is a, a little bit of a, you know, um, question that I've been struggling with. I'm starting to get some emails from college students looking for an internship. And man, it is tough to figure out what to say because you don't know if you're gonna be open for business. So you're trying to figure out how, if you are open, how you create a safe work environment for your employees. Um, you know, this is, you're in this. So um, do you have any guidance um, with regard to that? Absolutely. Uh, thank you so much for allowing me to chat. I just wanted to give a, a shout out as well to everyone who spoke so far. It's so good to be with you, especially when it's like a, a more grim day. It's a little cold. It's yeah. nice to be in the warmth of your company. But I wanted to just share that the PA Career Link and the Luzerne uh, School Workforce Development Board received funding uh, called the State Local Internship Program from the PA Department of Labor and Industry. And we're currently working with employers in our community uh, to help reimburse the cost of summer internships so that they can offer these uh, eight week internships, 25 to 40 hours a week, starting at a minimum rate of 1035 an hour to uh, college students in our area. So we've been actually gathering Wonderful. names and emails uh, for these uh, candidates, these 18 to 24 year olds, and we're gathering a list of postings that are on our website, pacurling.pa.gov. 
uh, for the employers in our community and trying to facilitate those matches. So we know it's a difficult time with schools uh, not being in session. A lot of yeah. internship fairs that were scheduled in March were canceled. Uh, and so we're sort of uh, stepping up and, and, and trying to serve as, you know, the, the means by which students can learn about what opportunities do exist. A lot of those opportunities do look different. Uh, they're remote, they're virtual, sure. uh, and you know, for employers that you know would, would like to participate and provide that opportunity but may not have the funding, uh, we'd love to talk to you. There is funding still available uh, and we could chat about some of the specifics. So if anyone's interested um, from an employer side uh, and wants to host an intern but doesn't feel like they have the means, we do have some funding available, uh, please reach out to me. I, I've typed my email address in the chat, amelf.edsisolutions.com. I'd love to speak with you. If you know an 18 to 24 year old who's looking, we do have a list of currently available internships uh, from our employer partners and they do range from marketing, uh, to engineering, uh, architecture. Uh, so there's there's a wide variety and, and we'd be happy to uh, share that list specifically with those students. Oh, that's wonderful because, you know, I mean, that's the thing that you, th I think about the kids that are graduating high school, the kids that are in college today, it's such a scary time because you're, you know, here you're working so hard to build a future and, and you know, suddenly you're like, wow, what is the world going to look like? Um, and uh, so it's wonderful that you're giving this opportunity to allow them to continue down that path um, of uh, building their careers. Um, so thank you, Anthony. One more time, can you just, uh, so that if people are listening um, and watching, how would they reach you about um, uh, getting on your database and matching up with an intern? Sure. Uh, please uh, contact me by email at amelf, A-M-E-L-F, at edsisolutions.com. I do have it typed uh, in the chat uh, on the side there if you want to take a look. Uh, and I'd be more than happy to then work with you specifically on the details. We can get a job posting on our website for your internship, and, and we can discuss how the, you know, the reimbursement process works. That's great. That's great. Well, Anthony, I look forward to seeing you in person soon. I hope you don't look like Grizzly Adams by that point. And you're too young to even know who Grizzly Adams is. But if you're over 40, you know who that is. <laughs> I may not know who he is, but I get the impression of what he might look like. <laughs> Thanks, Liz. Thanks, Anthony. Um, is Holly Pill Cabbage on the line? Um, I haven't talked to Holly in a while. Yeah, I'm here. Hey, Holly, good to see you. Hi, good to see you. Well, you and I have been working together during this pandemic. I, uh, I, I've been pushing Holly and her team hard to help us with our refreshed website, which they've been working hard on. So, but tell me what you're up to these days and how are you helping your clients navigate through this? Yeah, for sure. Um, well, just like so many others, we went remote about six, seven weeks ago now, maybe eight. I don't know. Time isn't real anymore. <laughs> um, but yeah, we're still here. We're still working hard, um, especially in that web development, um, you know, getting people online and, and uh, working with through people that maybe do have products and whatnot that they can um, maybe even just throw up a, a landing page for e-commerce, things like that. Um, a lot of it's just been conversations around, you know, what do we say? Uh, how do we really navigate this? How do we keep people informed? Um, and just reminding our, our, our collaborators that like we're truly all in this together. <laughs> so yeah. it's okay to not have all to admit that you're taking it day by day, week by week, things like that. Um, from Cole Creative's perspective, though, uh, all through April, we I think somebody had mentioned it earlier, we, we did 30 days of staying connected, and it was just a blend of, um, you know, throwing out tips and tricks, having some Zoom conversations with uh, various people around the community, some shout outs um, as things were coming up and popping up in our own feeds. Um, I, I would always admit that I think it was a little bit more for me than anybody else because I'm just so used to being out in the community with so many of you and, and, I, and I just missed that and so it was um, just a way to stay connected daily and I actually want to throw out to anybody here and maybe anybody watching um, we won't be doing daily videos moving forward but we're transitioning to um, kind of more of a theme of what's fueling you during this time so I will be reaching out to a handful of you here to see if you'd be interested in, in one of those zoom chats um, 
but um, yeah, just really trying to stay connected. And, and uh, even for us being, it wasn't too hard for us to shift, you know, virtual because a lot of our work is done that way. Um, you know, our video team taking that biggest hit because they can't be out in the world right now, but yeah. uh, it forced us to get a, even more creative at this time. Yeah, well, I have to give a shout out to your team and Sam O'Connell, who typically does our videos and um, walked us through how to do the iPhone, iPad video um, <laughs> situation yeah. so that we could communicate with our clients um, via video. You guys did a great job. And I also don't want to let you go without congratulating you. Did I read that um, your film, Black Hole, was yeah. um, admitted to both the Westchester Film Festival and the Pennsylvania? film festival it's in the in the westchester and um it, it's for best pennsylvania filmmaker as well it's it's a nominee wow. for that now yep wow <laughs> well when are we going to be able to see it streaming that's the big question because i i have to say like i cried in that you know short film it was like fantastic if you haven't yeah. seen it if you're on the Zoom call and you haven't seen it, you need to see Black the Black Hole, right? Oh, yeah, thank you. Uh, we do have to keep it under wraps just because uh, festival festival rules, it can't be public anywhere. But um, if you email me directly, I, I can probably slip you the passcode and, and the direct link. And as long as you promise not to <laughs> share it out, <laughs> you That's can take it. That's awesome. Seat. That's awesome. Well, congratulations. Another thank bit you. of good news during this period, right? Yeah, it was much needed. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. So, hey, is uh, Brian from Grateful Roast, um, one of my co favorite coffee places in Nanakoke on the line? Yeah, I am here. I just got a drive through customer, so I'm going to have to, you know, deal with that. Um, sure. I guess I'll text you or message you when I'm back at the seat. We're okay. still open for business, so I'm just trying to fill in here. That's fantastic. So as we're driving around, um, we should be uh, – making our pit stops at Grateful Roast and uh, supporting another small business. Um, is there anybody else that we want to reach out to, Ahmad? I know we only have six minutes left, so. Yeah, I think um, we, we covered a lot. I think we have everyone in the share. It looks like Brian's back. You know what, I could just try to talk while I'm doing this. I mean, it's, I can multitask. So I think the biggest, uh, obstacle, of course, yeah. and COVID is trying to stay relevant. Um, as a cafe, most of our business is done, you know, face to face and person to person. So, as soon as we had to shut our doors, uh, we pretty much lost ninety percent of the reason why we're doing this to begin with. So, um, we had to fight to stay relevant. Um, and at the same time, you know, I'm selling three dollar fifty cent cups of coffee, and if I'm not getting those customers in buying those coffees, you know, I'm 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 hurting. So, um, right. I, Thinking how how can I so how can I continue to be relevant and sell coffee when I when I don't have customers in the cafe? So uh, what we did is we started offering coffee for the front lines. So what we would do is I uh, put up on the website the ability for my customers to buy a cup of coffee or a pastry uh, for, for a frontline worker. And I set the baseline at either uh, two boxes of coffee and a tray of pastries, or you could participate by buying just one pastry, one cup of coffee at a time. And as soon as I got enough orders to fulfill one delivery, I went ahead and took that to a frontline. Uh, we've, wow. been, we've been working uh, pretty closely with LCC too. Luckily, they've been involved with uh, their nursing program, trying to reach out to their nursing alumni that are working at uh, different uh, hospitals and, and uh, clinics throughout the, the region. So about four days a week, I'll, I'll load up my car with coffee and pastries and I'll drive to the hospital and make a delivery. This is doing a few things. First of all, it's staying real true to our mission. Number one, we wanted to make sure we put people before profits and everything we do at Grateful Roast. So we're able to deliver that by making sure that we're rewarding the front line and recognizing our community. And at the same time, we're trying to become uh, more sustainable by, you know, being able to sell those cups of coffee, even though we can't do it person to person, we're still getting those sales in online. So, uh, you know, we're just trying to work it out and trying to stay true to our mission. And uh, I love you guys, but I'm gonna bow, bow out, so. <laughs> 
Thanks, Brian. So um, I think I think Brian um, illustrates uh, what's so important and about um, what we're doing here on this call and what we need to do going forward. And that is, um, I had posted, uh, you know, actually back in March when the, um, you know, the pandemic first started gaining steam, and we and we knew that. Um, you know, it, it was going to be pretty serious that when we came out of this, the only question we were going to need to ask ourselves is, um, is this dollar that I'm spending staying local? Because um, in my business, I'm in an, I, I invest people's money um, for a living. So I work with public companies all the time. Most of those public companies, if they're well run, are going to be just fine. But you know what? It's the local business. It's the small business. It's Brian at Grateful Roast delivering hot coffee to our essential workers. That is the most important thing for our community. Um, we need to keep these businesses open. We need to support local businesses now more than ever. Um, and, uh, and I know that um, people are going to be tired of me saying this, but I am telling you every single time I open up my wallet, pull out a dollar, pull out a credit card. The only thing I'm thinking about is this helping a local business, local employers, local employees, and, uh, and a small business. So um, we've had some great discussion today. I could, I could just do this all day long, frankly, and I really appreciate everybody logging on. Um, I want to give a shout out to Tyler Rice at Axelrad uh, Screen Printing. Tyler, you are, you are just rocking it. I am going to be wearing small business t-shirts for the next 365 days as I do yoga or run errands or whatever. Um, I want to thank Donna Caruso, who, you know, as a wellness center, a spa center, um, you're, you guys are, you know, um, I know struggling because you're, you're shut down completely, but, um, but you are figuring it out. You are educating your customers. Um, I can't wait to get back and get into that salt room and, um, and relieve some stress in the uh, flotation pod. And, um, and finally, to my good friend, Maggie Calpin at Nibbles and Bits. Um, Maggie, you're just a, a you know, a ray of sunshine in this, and um, and I love everything you're doing. I buy all your product at Wegmans. I I, I do the curbside pickup, um, but um, you know, I just want to thank everybody for joining us on the call. I'm going to turn it over to Ahmad, um, but please, if you do anything, um, spend your money local, support local business. Um, we need you now more than ever. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Thank Liz for leading this, discuss, this discussion here today. Um, while I close this out, I want to encourage you all to download the chat and save it. There's some great information shared in there and um, conversations, so go ahead and do that now um, and connect with each other after this. Also, our chamber will keep sharing information and resources as we all work together through this time as a united community. Um, in addition, our resource page and communications, we now have an interactive tool on our website that you can submit any issues or questions about COVID-19 and we'll connect you with the resources slash assistance that you need. Um, thank you again and join us next week via Zoom for the debut of our Wolf's Right Connect Connect Further series. And if you haven't done so already, also sign up for our newsletter to stay up to date with our upcoming events. We hope you all stay safe and continue to be well. Enjoy the year, rest of the Wednesday. Thank you everyone. Bye guys. Awesome. Thanks, Bye. Pat.